So welcome back. Um, it's time for our next next speaker, Ines Sosa. So welcome. Thank you. Okay. So um, hi. I'm going to show you a application starter, which is meant to be the entry point for your application. Um, my name is Ines Sosa, and I will present this talk because Julian Maestri was afraid to do it. <laughs> um, he's not here, if you see. He, he's not even in the crowd. Oh, he's entering the room. So, um, I'm, so what, what application starter is? It's a small tool that provides facilities to start applications uh, in Faro through the command line. And it provides parameter management, simple logging, and startup errors handling uh, using fuel files. And well, even though it's like cut, and it's especially useful when you when you deploy applica applications using Docker. So, um, why does it help? Well. Uh, as Mariano explained in his previous talk, I will assume that you all pay attention to his talk. And yes. As Mariano explained uh, in his previous talk, uh, Docker containers are ephemeral. And because of that, when the context uh, is finished, we cannot access uh, the things that were running on it. Because of that, we don't have access to the running image to examine it. And even though we uh, deploy a full image with a UI, we cannot see it because it's Docker. It kind of doesn't allow you to have a UI present. And also because modifying configurations uh, files in a container can be annoying or complex. So uh, for these cases, it's better to have uh, command line parameters or um, system variables. So uh, I'm going to show you how to use this. It's a very, very small tool, as I said. Um, you have to start by loading the application starter. Oh, it's cut again. Oops. Um, you load the application starter that it's available on the GitHub page. Oh, don't worry, I'll show you the full URL at the finish of the presentation. Um, after you load this application in your Faro image, you have to create a subclass of application starter command line handler. And then I'm going to show you how to define uh, the need methods for your subclass. There are only five methods that we have to define here. And there are three on the class side and two on the instance side, as you can see here. And I'm going to explain the class side first and then move to the instance side. So here I have my Faro image. And as you can see, is it, is the, is, is, is it too small? The people from the back can see the letter? OK. So uh, here I have my Smalltalk 2019 command line handler application. And here in the class side, I have the three methods that you can see in this slide before. The first one is the command name. And it's a simple string that defines the name of your application. The second one is the description, that it's a description for your application. And the last one, it's a log prefix that is used to be prepared to the log files. Uh, this is useful because when you have more than one Docker instance uh, dumping log files in the, same, in the same path, you want to know which log belongs to your application. Uh, and then if we go to the instance size, we have two methods. The configuration definition that it's an array of arguments that are going to be sent to our application. And there are three, time, th three types of arguments that we are going to define. The mandatory argument that, as the name uh, explained it, it's mandatory and our application needs these arguments 
to start up. Here, ah, oh, okay. And then we have optional arguments. There are arguments that can or cannot be sent to the image when it starts up. But as they are optional arguments, we have to manually define the default argument if we are not going to send it. And also there's another type of argument that it's not in this example because it was irrelevant. There are flag arguments. And as the name says it, it's a flag. You can send a true or false value. And then the last method is the basic activate. That it's the method that has the actual logic to start your application. And with this definition of mine, I'm going to show you which example I'm going to show you here. So what Julian and I did, it's a simple server that starts uh, in a port that we're going to send through the command line. And it's the mandatory argument here. And also, we're going to send the format, uh, the format of the re response that we want. Uh, this simple application is a simple server that starts up and calculates the factorial of a number that it's going to be sent in the URL. So as I said before, when we start the application, we're going to send the port and also the format of the answer that it's defaulting to text plain or it can be a JSON format. So um, after that's all we have to define for the application. And here in the basic activate, you can see that I'm using my the parameters that I set and that I'm going to call this Smalltalk 2018 example server, that it's the actual server that we are going to start up. And that's all you have to define. So now I'm going to show you how this works, uh, like the real example of this working. So, so here we have a terminal, and if I execute the Faro, Faro image, Smalltalk 2019, which is the name of my application, and I send the parameter port and I indicate the port, when I execute it, we are going to see that it's logging the information that it's used to start our application. So here it's telling us that we don't provide the, the format parameter and tell us that it's going to default to a text plane as we define in our application. And also, it tells us that the port in which the application has started is the 8080. Um, this, is, uh, this is a facility that is provided by the command line, um, by the application starter. Um, also, yes, I'm going to show you an example with Docker. So if I move to... this folder and I execute this docker compose command. We are going to see that it's actually starting up five instances of the application starter and we can also see that for each instance is going to tell that the format that we specified is application slash JSON and the port in which instance it's going to be start up is the 8080. So for this case, I didn't specify through the command line because I am using Docker. Uh, when we deploy the application using Docker, we have to define those parameters in our Docker Compose file. So if we open our doc Docker Compose file, we're going to see that under the command, we are sending the port and the format that we want our application to start up. So I 
show you the example, I show you the demo for, for Docker. And that's all you have to do. You, okay, yes, you have to have knowledge of Docker because it's meant to use with Docker. And it's really simple to use. You have to define only five methods and then you have your application ready to deploy. And for our future work, I mean, this is a simple application, but we still have things to do. The first one is to allow graceful termination because sometimes when you send a stop command to the Faro image, it doesn't handle it very well, and then it has to shut down the entire image. Uh, also, we have to integrate it with Club, which is a tool available in Faro 8. Uh, I didn't mention it that, but it's only available in Faro 6 or 7, which are the Faro versions they are, we are currently using. But we are thinking of porting it to Faro 8. And we have to add um, configuration for environment variables, which is a very helpful way to start our applications. And support for sensitive parameters, for example, if we want to connect to a database and we need to provide the password to connect to the database, uh, we cannot just put it in a simple plain file. It's not the correct way. And we have to improve the logging. For this part, we are not using any logging tool. So if you have any idea or any logging framework for Faro, we are open to proposals. And I think that's all. So the uh, application is in the BA ST group, that it's a GitHub group that has a very large catalog of uh, small talk applications under the application starter name. It has an MIT license, so you can download it, you can change it, uh, you can make your own version. And I think that's all. It was a very small talk. So, well, here are usernames, and here are our names if you want to contact us and us, I think. So, um, that's it. It was very small. So, thank you. Questions? Oh, okay. Thank you, Ness.